welcome to Planet Linux. I'm glad that you found this video. For those of you that are subscribed to and follow my channel, I do apologize that it's been so long since I've uploaded new content. Uh, between some travel that I was on as well as a medical emergency that came up, I just was not able to find the time or energy to figure out what my next video would be about much less get around to actually recording it. So I do sincerely apologize for that. That being said, at this point I think I'm feeling well enough to finally resume these videos. I've been using Linux Mint, uh, currently 18.2, but I've been using Linux Mint in general as my daily driver for some time now, probably the past uh, three months. And I've really enjoyed the experience. As you can see, I've customized it quite a bit here. I've got the panel on the side. I'm using the Arc uh, GTK and Cinnamon themes. I have the flat remix icon theme. But that being said, I'm really looking to uh, jump back to something Arch-based for a distribution. It's been a while since I've used it, and I have a few options in mind, including Entergos, since I may have fixed the issues I'd been having with updates that I mentioned in a previous video. Uh, also, Revenge OS is looking very promising, so I'll have to decide what I'm going to, but nonetheless, I figured this would be a great opportunity to show you a great, easy, simple way to backup files on your system so that you can directly access them from the device you back them up to or easily transfer them to another computer or a new install on your current computer since that's what I'll have to be doing anyways if I decide to swap distributions. And there are plenty of backup utilities available for Linux. There are literally dozens and they all work, or at least most of them that I've tried, work pretty well. The only issue is, they often back up into a sort of compressed folder, and you need to use that same backup utility to uncompress the backups when you want to uh, access the files or restore to a backup that you've created. And what I really want, and I think a lot of you would find very helpful is just a solution that allows you to back up a set of directories or files uh, to a device, whether it's an external drive, a USB drive, another hard disk partition, and be able to access those files directly on that device uh, or transfer and manage those files without having to worry about restoring through a backup utility or uncompressing folders, just being able to access and manage the direct files themselves. If I transfer the files in my home folder to the device, then I can uh, I can access the exact files uh, that were in my home folder on that device. And there's a great utility for that called grsync. Now, before I get ahead of myself, there, it's actually based on a command line uh, terminal utility called rsync, which is very versatile. It does a lot. Um, grsync is the graphical front end, which certainly makes the process of backing things up much easier for someone who uh, tends to like more point and click sort of computer use, or you just don't want to take the time to enter a bunch of terminal commands, it definitely makes your life easier. So we'll load up grsync here. This is available on just about any distribution I've used, either out of the box. In most cases, you do have to uh, download it. However, it's available in most repositories. Um, certainly the Linux Mint ones, Ubuntu, Debian, uh, I believe Arch has it for certain in the Arch user repository, and perhaps in the your main distributions repositories as well. But this is the grsync application, and it's actually very simple to use. In the first tab here, under basic options, 
we have a source and destination box. I've already kind of set this up. For example, what I typically do when moving to a new distribution, since I want everything from my home folder, you would simply click open and select your home folder here. Uh, if I had multiple users, they would all show up here, and presumably I would want all users' data uh, to be transferred, so I would simply select the home folder, click open, and then for the destination, I have a uh, external hard drive called Universal Backup. Currently, this is empty. And a quick lesson on uh, external devices in Linux. If you plugged this thing into Windows, it would show up as another device uh, separate from your hard drive, and it would be assigned a drive letter, for example, drive E or F. Um, in Linux, however, external devices are actually uh, mounted within the root folder of your Linux installation, which is, of course, on your computer's hard drive. Well, most likely on your computer's hard drive, whatever drive your system is installed on. And so if I go into um, a root user uh, file manager here, and we go to the base file system, you'll see that instead of uh, the device showing up as a separate drive. Of course, it shows up down here as a device, but its actual location is in the media folder under my user, and here is the device. Now, this will be important in a moment, um, so I just want you to keep that in mind when you're looking for your device that you want to transfer to. So we do want my universal backup drive, as I've called it, uh, selected as the destination. Now for each of these, what I typically do is just put a slash at the end of both of them. It just guarantees that it tells GRSync, yes, I want to uh, back up all of the contents within this directory that I have selected. Uh, so it will directly back up everything within the selected directories to a location within the selected destination directory, in this case the universal backup drive. As far as the settings under here, there are numerous things you can change. Most of them you can probably leave as default, however if you hover over each of them it does give brief descriptions. Um, I have selected to delete on destination, this means if I have one backup of five files. There's five files on my system. I've backed up those same five files to the backup drive. If I delete one of the files on my system and I back up again, it will then delete that file from the destination. Typically, you would probably want that. If you are concerned about accidentally deleting files and you want your backup to contain every file you've ever had and to not get rid of them, unless you explicitly delete them from the backup, then you could uncheck this. For both just means that it shows uh, um, more output when you run the process. So let's find a leave checked. Ignore existing will make it so it skips over files that are already on the um, backup. You can have it skip newer versions if you don't want it to back up newer versions. Show transfer progress. Um, check the size of files only. Ignore the time. And Windows compatibility. This is great if you are going to at some point be using those backed up files or transferring them to a Windows computer and make sure that they are um, properly set up for an FAT file system. I actually currently have this backup drive uh, formatted as NTFS, which tends to work pretty well with both Linux and Windows. I don't use Windows much. Um, I probably could have gotten away with this being a generic EXT4, but I've 
used this drive for numerous different purposes over the years, and so it's currently NTFS. Under Advanced Options, not too much you'll have to mess with here, but if you really feel like it, go through and check them out. Uh, I typically do not mess with any of these. And then under Extra Options, because this is a graphical front end for rsync, which is a terminal utility, you can have it execute a specific command before or after the transfer or backup process is run, if you so desire. Um, and here is the important one, run as super user. In many cases, you will want to make sure this is checked because, as I mentioned before, based on where what files you're backing up and, in most cases, where your device is located that you're backing them up to, those locations will require root access. If I just go into a standard file uh, Nemo window here, I can access this device, however, I can't get to its uh, media folder. Well, correction, I can get to the media folder, I can't edit anything in these folders because I don't have super user uh, root access. So, you will want to make sure in most cases that you are set to run as a super user. With that being said, once you have all those settings and you've set your uh, source and your destination, you have two buttons here. Well, you have four buttons, but the two buttons you want to focus on right now are the uh, far right ones along this top bar. The first here is to do a dry run, which is essentially to uh, show you the output of what would be transferred and what would happen if you were to actually run it right now, but it won't actually transfer anything. And then, of course, we have the full run, which, as it's so elegantly put here, is go. <laughs> that would actually do what you have set up. For the purpose of this video, we'll just go through a dry run. It will look pretty much the exact same as a regular one, except it won't actually transfer any of the files, it will just show us what it would transfer. So we'll click this, of course it will ask for our password since it is requiring root access. And it's gone through very quickly here, it's already finished. I ran this um, just a little while ago anyways before I realized it might be a good idea to do a video on it. So there isn't too much here to worry about, but as you can see you can go through and see a list of each of the files that it um, would transfer over. I have a lot of similar files here from numerous icon themes and uh, desktop themes that I've transferred. Yeah, a lot of icon themes. Um, so you can get a good look here at everything that uh, would be transferred. This allows you to go back and change anything if you need to, if you weren't sure what settings you needed, or you need to change a source or destination. And then when you're ready, you can just click the full run button and it will go through and do all of that for you. This is nice because, um, excuse me, the the, as I mentioned, the reason GR Sync here is so nice compared to other backup utilities is when something is transferred. For example, I will just transfer over my pictures folder for the time being. Uh, it'll just give us something to work with without having to worry about everything being sent over right now. We'll do a full run of this. Should only take a moment because there isn't too much to worry about. There we go. So now if we load into our backup drive, I have all of the pictures on here. I actually forgot to put the slash I had mentioned 
um, after the destination. So everything just got stuck straight on here. I'm actually going to delete. I'm going to try to delete all of these real quickly. I know this seems kind of productive, but I'm trying to prove a point here. Uh, if I go through again here, oh sorry, I did put the slash. If I take out the slash, it will um, stick it in a new pictures folder, I believe, as opposed to putting the files directly on the root destination. So now if we take a look, yes, it stuck them in the pictures folder. So that's your preference as to how you want it done. I'll actually probably delete some of those files because I really don't need those ones over around the device anyway, but that's no need to do that right now. So as you can see there, the fact that um, what makes GRSync so nice is these files are directly accessible. There's no needing to go into the backup utility program and tell it, hey, I want to restore these files from this device. They're just directly transferred over. You can access them very easily. Uh, don't have to do anything extra. I could directly copy anything from here over to any folders on my system now. Um, Hassle-free. It works perfectly. That, wow, was a botched logo. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have found uh, this information about GR Sync to be quite helpful. And as I'm beginning to feel a bit better recovering from everything going on the past few weeks, I should be back to uploading videos on a somewhat regular schedule. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like on this video. If there's anything you'd like to say, you have any questions or comments, well, go ahead and write it down in the comments. I'll do my best to respond to each and every one of you until that section gets so overflowing with comments that I can't keep up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to stay up to date on the latest videos. I'd really appreciate it, and it helps you. Also, click that notification bell button as that makes sure you're notified whenever I upload new content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.